coming up on iPads in the Classroom, Children's Literature Part 2. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today I want to talk again about children's literature on the iPad and on digital devices in general. And this is a topic that we've actually studied. Kristen Javorski and I have worked on uh, for the past uh, couple of years. And what we've discovered, and this is an important thing to learn, is that working on children's literature through the iPad is a great opportunity, not just to teach about literature, but also to teach kids to be flexible. And that is, the way you navigate a book in paper is almost always the same. Some picture books are a little bit different. They've got 3D constructions and other things in them. But in general, we start at the same side. We pick up the pages the same way and we carefully turn them the, uh, uh, to see what happens in the next page. What we've discovered is when we look at the kind of books that are actually enjoyed on devices, this looks very, very different when you cross between devices and even in the same device. Sometimes even the same app, depending on when you access it, updates and changes the way it does things. So this is something to keep in mind. What we need to teach as kids is not necessarily to stick with one app or one way of doing things, but actually that idea of cognitive flexibility, of moving and figuring out what it does, knowing that we can't really break it. Um, because the apps are the apps and you can always turn them off and turn them on again and they'll go back to where they were before. So different apps behave differently, and I'll give you a few examples. For example, if we go to iBooks, which we visited last time, so if I go to iBooks, and open a book, and we'll open um, one of the beginning readers that we did last time, the way to move between pages is just to move them. And you can see that it's just moving them as panels in this case. Um, and if you want to do anything else, you just tap on the page anywhere lightly and you can go back to your library, you can navigate to other pages and you can bookmark. So you can go back to the beginning and skip to the page you want. Now this doesn't work the same way for all apps and we'll see some other examples in, in a second. The other thing that you can do that you can do in a regular book is of course search for a word. So if I want to look for a rabbit, right, for the word rabbit, here are the places in the book where there are rabbits. It gives me the, the sentence they're in and I can switch to that and it highlights the word. So I can actually do a text search inside this. These are some of the affordances that I can find inside iBooks. Now, if we switch to a different uh, book app, let's say Collins Big Cat, right? and I've got one such example, the world. They have about 10 of those available right now. You can see that when we get into this app, First of all, we have music, which did not exist in the iBook version at all. There's no sound. You, can, you have immediately three options. And let's go to the read by myself. And now we've got the book starting. And you see that the navigation, instead of the top, is on the bottom. And it's always visible. So it doesn't disappear like it does on iBooks. It's a different format. And again, going back to that idea that we want our kids to be flexible. And we want them to figure this out. And I think. And we know uh, for a fact that most kids, starting very early, preschool, kindergarten, can start navigating those different systems. So for example, this is how I bring up my pages. And I can get any page I want to jump to very easily. I can press on listen on a specific page, not just a read to me that is across everything. And you can see that even the highlighting works differently. So, in some apps, the highlighting will work 
uh, as it is being read a whole paragraph or a whole sentence or a phrase. Here it is word by word. So different apps even do that piece differently. You can get help or you can go straight back home to the beginning uh, page. So lots of ways to navigate, always a little bit different. What I love about this one and uh, the whole Collins Big Cat series is the ability to then go ahead and create. Again, that's not available in all apps, so you want to make sure that this is something that is there because it opens the doors for kids to actually create and not just consume the story, which is very useful. And this is another way to think about it. Here, what you can see is that the added value of using this app is kids' creativity and kids' ability to record themselves as they read great features in this specific one. If you go to a different one, let's uh, go to Farfaria, for example, uh, which has multiple stories on it, you'll see that, again, we've got a different kind of navigation that shows exactly how kids need to be to have that flexibility to be able to navigate effectively across uh, different apps. So this one, Farfaria, has different zones where you can explore. So the first thing you do is decide where you want to go. And here, playing around is actually recommended. And you can see that there's also the bar on the bottom that allows you to explore, to have favorites and go back to your favorites, or just use the things that are recently read. So lots of ways to actually interact with this one. And you can see that we're downloading a story. So you download multiple stories because there is access. And again, we have this read to me, read to myself, or autoplay. Again, showing up at a different place and showing up only when the story comes up. So what is important to remember in children's literature on digital devices, especially the iPad, look for quality, look for added value out of these a online text, they can do more. Make sure that there aren't too many seductive uh, details or seductive activities that actually take away from the main theme or from the comprehension of the story because there are too many things to play with that are not necessarily supporting the main idea. And that you want kids to explore and think about what are the global features that I'm looking for. We have always have a, an opening page, we always have a navigation page and a way to navigate between pages and all of that. Uh, sometimes we have the ability to uh, highlight words um, and even create. And so you have to really consider that whole package and who your students are before you choose to interact with children's literature on digital devices. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.